Hey everyone, this is Aria, and if you were here for my last tutorial, you'll remember that we created this 3D generative art piece using geometry nodes. And if you weren't here for my last tutorial, just make sure to check that out so that you can get this full setup exactly like we had it in the other tutorial, just so that you're caught up with everything that we're doing. I've had a few people ask me how I turned this into a 3D object and how I was able to get this to work correctly inside a 3D slicing program. So you'll notice that this does look like a regular 3D object that we can manipulate in Blender, but there's also a few issues with it that we would need to correct. And the first one is if I hit tab to go into edit mode, you'll see that we've only got the original vertices from our default cube that we used to create the geometry node system on. As well, if I was to zoom in, you'll notice that our pivot point is at the center of the world. Our shapes appear to be starting a little further back. The reason why that is, is because there's two that are sitting right here, they're just infinitely small. And the problem that I ended up figuring out was if you went through the steps of exporting this and then bringing it into a 3D slicing program, you'll notice that if I select it, it's entirely red and it says that it's detecting holes in the object. If I was to click repair, you'll see that it's not able to be repaired and you may just have issues printing this in general. I discovered it was because these two are so infinitely small that the program is reading them, but of course the printer actually needs geometry to print. you notice that we have our shape coming in as our instance. We're using the mesh line to scale them in the x-axis. What we're doing is telling it to scale based on the index of the mesh line, and if I just quickly plug this mesh line into the geometry nodes, you'll see that we've just got a simple line here. It starts at 0 and goes all the way up to 30. So if we tell it to scale based on the index, it's going to start at 0 and have an infinitely small shape. That's a super easy fix, and all we need to do is use a little bit of math. How we're going to do that is add 1 to our index, which is super easy. We can do that by adding a math node. So hit shift A and type in math. Then we're just going to drop that right in there and you'll see right away that something popped into existence down here. I'm just going to set this to 1. We need to do the same thing to the bottom line here. So while we've got our math node selected, we'll hit shift D and then we'll just drop this right in the index. You'll notice now that it actually jumped a little bit forward, and the reason why that is is because we initially offset our geometry by 0.5. The next thing that I want to point out is if I just kind of go to the side here, you'll see as we pass by this, it almost looks like they're starting to disappear and some of these are really thin. The reason why is because there's actually zero thickness on any of the blades right now, and there's a few ways that you can add thickness to these blades, but I'm just going to show you the easiest way that I found to do it. That's by adding a solidify modifier. So if we just head over to the right into the modifier properties, click here and click solidify, you'll see that it's not really working. No matter how thick we make this, nothing is changing. So there is one more step that we have to do within the geometry nodes tree. The way we can do that is by realizing our instances. So let's hit shift A, search, and you can type in real. Then you'll see this option here, realize instances. And we just want to drop that right at the end of our node tree. Now we can head over to the modifiers again, click here, and select the solidify modifier. We can jump back into the geometry nodes by selecting the modifier. I just want to make this a little bit thicker, just because depending on what size you're printing, you may want these to be a little bit thicker. Then we can go back to the solidify modifier and in this case we want to type in 0.2. These are now side by side and this would work for 3D printing. If you wanted to make sure you could type in 0.21 just so that they're slightly intersecting as well. At this point we could use this as our file for 3D printing but you'll notice that if I hit tab we still have our original cube which means we can't edit this at all in Blender. What I like to do is make a second copy of this by hitting shift D. Then we can just hide our original. Make sure that we have our new copy selected and we can apply our geometry nodes. Now if I hit tab to go into edit mode, you'll see that we can actually grab the vertices of our object. 
if you're looking to edit this further within Blender or just using it for a different purpose, you may want to have access to these vertices. And the best way to do that is by applying the geometry nodes to the object. I'm going to delete that and bring back our original just because we don't need that unless we want to edit it within Blender. And keep in mind, if you do apply the geometry nodes, you want to make sure that you've picked your frame first because once you apply them, you'll notice that nothing changes. Now it's stuck with that shape. When we do want to export this out to our slicing software, we do need to pick a frame. So I'm going to go with this frame here. Then you just want to make sure to select your object, head up to file, export. I find most people who are 3D printing use .stl, so I'm going to click that. And then you can just name this whatever you want. Also make sure to have this selected. Otherwise, if you've got anything else in your scene, it'll also export that. So just make sure that's turned on. You'll see now that if we drag in our new file, there's no holes and there's nothing to be repaired. If you're interested in seeing a tutorial on the process of using the slicing software, make sure to leave a comment below and let me know. But for now, just make sure to like and subscribe. If you want to support me, head over to my Patreon and sign up to become a member. I hope to see you soon. Bye!